Hi there, Chris here from Fanfield Farm and today I'm going to show you how we turned our static caravan from this into this. Stay tuned. So as you can see, we've clad our static caravan, but we've not only clad it to make it look nicer, we've also insulated it to make it a hell of a lot warmer. So let me show you the first steps in cladding a static caravan. So the first things we did was took off anything that we knew would get in the way. So above all of our windows on the caravan were um, little lips here um, that would have taken the rainwater away. So we knew they would get in the way and we took them away. We sort of worked out where different areas would um, not be able to have insulation. So like our vents that we'd need to put vents in the actual outer cladding and different areas we took away. Then we started to work with battens. So we knew that we had 50 mil insulation. So this is uh, Rectocell, I believe. We um, ordered Celotex, um, but ended up with this stuff, which is just as good. Um, you can use Kingspan or anything like that. It's just a basic foam insulation um, with a waterproof barrier on it. So you can see down here, it's a nice thickness, nice, keeps us nice and warm. Um, and it's not too expensive if you get it from the right place, certainly anyway. So we then decided that we needed battens that would hold the 50 mil in and give us battens to screw the cladding onto. So this was the difficult bit, working out where these could go. So we've got these battens here. Now they are, they're actually 49 mil thick, um, but it just about works with the cladding. It's absolutely fine. Um, and I will list exactly what materials we used in the comments below. I can't remember the width of these, but the depth was enough that it would hold the insulation in. Then we had to find where we could screw these in. So this is the bit that we get asked quite a lot um, and it's fairly challenging. But what we did know is the top and the bottom of the caravan has wooden battens. So we could feel underneath here that there are battens here that we could definitely screw into. And as you go around, you can actually get a good, pretty good gauge just by pushing. So on the metal here, you'll see there's lots of flex here. I don't think you can see that particularly well, but you can see, feel lots of flex. But as you move down, you'll start to feel a lot less flex. And here, particularly here, there is no flex at all. And um, we can see actually that these are two panels, um, two metal panels on this caravan. I don't know if this is the case on all static caravans, but there's two panels here. So they had to have something to screw these into. So we knew that just behind here, and you can feel, is a button as well. So putting some screws on the top and bottom and then finding areas to put them in the middle really does make this strong enough. Now I can give this a really good pull and wiggle and that's strong enough. The other clues are, if I show you over here, an area that we haven't quite finished on this side yet, is around windows. We know that windows need to be screwed in somewhere. So around windows and doors, we know there is going to be a good solid button behind there. Now you want to be careful not to screw through the metal or screw too close to the glass. You don't want to be cracking your windows open. But we knew that around these areas, there is going to be good buttons. So we kind of worked, there wasn't an actual um, regular size that we that we did. That it was all of these sort of areas for the insulation were exactly the same. We based where the buttons went, were, where on the windows and doors were, and anywhere we really knew we could screw them in quite comfortably. So after putting up the beams all the way along, we then put some little studs at the bottoms because we knew that we didn't want our insulation falling down and out. And all we're doing is cutting the insulation and pushing it up into these gaps. So we've pushed that up and then we add the cladding on to hold it all in place. So it's really quite simple. The, the main thing is finding where the buttons go, then getting the insulation in. Now insulation is really easy to cut. I should give you a disclaimer, you should wear a mask when you're doing this because it gets a lot of these sort of nasty foamy fibers off. But just with a normal saw, you can pretty much cut straight through nice and easily. Or you can even score it with a knife if you have enough patience.
something else that we really had to think about was battening around windows and on corners. What we learned from a project that we had done recently on building a shed was that on the corners, if you just butt up cladding to itself, um, as we haven't done here, but if you just butt up cladding to itself, you leave gaps, as you can see, if there was just another piece of cladding here, there'll be a gap and rainwater does find its way in. So what we've done here is put batten um, on the corners on both sides so that we create a closed area. And then also you create an area for the cladding to neatly butt up against. So you're really giving a nice area and a nice look and feel and finish. And then once we've decided to do this on the corners, we decided to do this around the windows as well because it just gave it a really nice finish. Um, to the different areas so we did that around the windows and around the doors as well in fact and it gives it a sort of a professional feel we built a shed recently that we didn't do this on and it looks a little less of a professional job our choice of cladding was because we couldn't really massively afford to do this um with with really sort of natural wood or anything like that we weren't really cheap but we think the effect has, has been sort of well we're really happy with it the cladding is just feather edge board. It's what they make fence panels out of. Um, but we bought treated feather edge board. This I think is 150 mil deep feather edge board. So there's a good two and a half, three centimeters of overlap on each of these. And then we were just cutting them down. We were trying to use as big a pieces or as whole pieces as possible, but cutting them down and screwing them in to the battens we had already put on and butting them up to the different piece of battens that we had added on top to frame the windows and doors. Now let me show you a corner because they were a little bit more complex to sort of understand how we did them. If I go around this side, you'll see that we have one exposed here. So you can see that we've got the batten. That's the batten for the corner. And there is actually another batten in there. So we've got two battens on each corner. These are the battens that are as thick as the insulation. Then we've got these battens here, which are for the um, for the corners and for going right up to. So what we've done is we've put a single piece and this is on the long side of the caravan. So we put a single piece on this side right up to the corner. So the corner of the caravan actually comes to here. And then we've put another piece on the short side, the back and front of the caravan that butts up to that piece. So you can see it comes right level with this piece on this side so it will be level with the cladding and then you butt the cladding up to here i hope that makes sense um do fire some questions to us if you have any troubles or with with getting your head around that it took me a sort of a while to work that out another little thing to think about that we sort of thought about quite late and had to take some cladding off and work out but was to put buttons where you want to screw things on the outside so if you want to add lights to the caravan like we've done here then making sure that you've got a bit of button running behind that light so that you can screw that up is really important um, and anything else that you want to do we added some security cameras and so we've put buttons in those areas that was something we really had to think about but our cha most challenging part of this build, um, or of the cladding, was the front. Now, um, I would do some things differently, I think, if I was to do it again. Here's the front. Now, you can see the challenges here in that the front actually comes down, then curves back, then curves down again. Um, this little section here wasn't too bad. I just framed it with some batten and added the cladding on. These areas were a little more challenging. We had to cut cladding in to fill that gap. Now they're not, as you can see, they're not perfect because this is a curved, curved roof there. Um, but from a distance, it looks really good um, or we're happy with it anyway. And we're quite pleased with how it's turned out. So we've still got a couple of bits to finish building um, with this. So we haven't, we've been able to show you the, the back of, or the, the side of the caravan that you can't see today because, and the insulation there, because we are actually extending that side of the caravan with a timber frame extension, an extra bedroom and a dining room. So we'll be able to show you that as we get to spring and start the build on that. So we do a lot of videos around that, which was really exciting to us, but it didn't feel right to clad it and then take it all off 
to then sort of cut through and, and build that extension. So that's still to do. Um, around the areas below the decking and below the base of the caravan and where the, the um, stands are and things, we're gonna clad all the way down there, but leaving gaps so the air can get through. That should also help with warmth from underneath. Um, and the other thing we need to finish off is putting vents where vents were before. So wherever there was a vent coming from the inside to the outside of the caravan, and you could, we showed those right at the beginning, I'm going to get some metal vents, cut those out, cut the holes out of the cladding and fit those. We also want the frames and door frames. We're going to spray them up with like a sort of dark gray to black matte spray paint. Um, and so we'll do the same with the vents as well. And then we'll finally be finished. I hope this has helped you to get your head round um, cladding a caravan and insulating a static caravan. We're really pleased with the results. There's things we would do differently if we did it again, but we're really pleased with how it looks and with the warmth it's adding inside. If you do have any questions, do put them in the comments below. I'll answer every single question. I'm more than happy to do that. And in the comments, uh, in the description of this video, I'll try and list all the materials that we used. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and check back. I'm Chris from Fanfield Farm. I'll speak to you again.